Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to talk to you today about the Battle of Dock Toe. The Battle of Dock Toe was a battle in the Vietnam War. It occurred in November 1967 and finished around the close toward the, towards the end of November. And after the battle, the U.S. soldiers had a Thanksgiving meal. And it was a hard-earned Thanksgiving meal. And the U.S. achieved their objectives. They captured the key hills. The main hill that they were said to capture was Hill 875. And they captured Hill 875. But unfortunately, the objectives in Vietnam were just body counts. The objectives were not strategic hills or strategic locations. So as soon as they took Hill 875, they had to leave. And the NVA and Viet Cong took Hill 875 back. It was ridiculous rules at that time, ridiculous war planning, but the U.S. military has changed since then. These brave soldiers from the 173rd Airborne Brigade, the U.S. soldiers that fought in Dock Toe were from the 173rd Airborne Brigade. General Westmoreland, who commanded the soldiers, the U.S. soldiers in Vietnam, he commanded all the U.S. soldiers in Vietnam. General Westmoreland called the 173rd Third Airborne Brigade, the Fire Brigade. The reason is because no matter how big the fire or how big of a problem or situation or catastrophe, General Westmoreland thought he could always count on the 173rd Airborne Brigade. Okay, and the 173rd Airborne Brigade were not, there were not any draftees in that specific brigade. They were all volunteers. They were all patriotic teenagers who wanted to serve their country. They wanted to prove themselves to their country, to they wanted to prove themselves to themselves, and they wanted to prove themselves to the people that they served with. The, the U.S. soldiers in the 173rd Airborne Brigade, they had a really good chaplain named Major Waters. He was a Catholic priest, and before the battle, he said mass to the soldiers, and even the soldiers who were not Catholic or who were agnostics or not sure if there was a God or deist. Deist believe God created the universe, but he doesn't intervene in our daily lives. But even those people joined in on the mass and they were glad to take communion. They were glad to they were glad to participate in that mass and a lot of them started to either believe or believe a lot more than they did before the mass. Major Waters was a very selfless individual. He Always gave the soldiers water, or assisted the medics with medical care, um, risked himself going into the line of fire to read the dying soldiers' last rites or to get the dying soldiers. If the dying soldiers had a last request, he made sure he heard it and delivered it to the families. He was a selfless man who wanted to do good in the world, and he did. But unfortunately, he died in the Battle of Dock Toe in a friendly fire incident. A U.S. plane misread a U.S. pilot and the radio man, there was miscommunication, and the U.S. pilot bombed a key thick tree that the medics and the wounded were behind to avoid enemy fire. They were behind that tree, but unfortunately, the U.S. plane accidentally bombed that tree, and Major Waters was killed. It was a devastating loss to the 173rd Airborne Brigade. They all loved, revered, and respected Major Waters. Okay, um... Another key soldier in this battle was the Hattiesburg, Mississippi resident, Charles Brown. He appeared in Vietnam in high definition. That's a really good program, and I highly recommend it. He's an African-American man from Hattiesburg, and he exemplified a lot of courage and bravery in that battle, and he was rewarded two bronze stars for what he did in the Battle of Dock Toe. And he was a really good soldier. And before he fought in the Battle of Dock Toe, he was in Fort Benning training soldiers, and he was a professional trainer and a, and a, a professional instructor and an efficient instructor. Um, but, and also when he had, before he got to Dr. Toe, he had gotten wounded. He was doing patrols in a village, and what his unit was doing was they were cutting apart bags of food and bags of rice because sometimes the Viet Cong would hide explosive devices in those bags. And he told his men to take their time, but he said the men didn't listen. And he was standing near one of the soldiers cutting the bag, and the soldier at that time just, just missed the explosive device, and it wounded Charles Brown. But he 
healed up in the hospital and was able to go to the Battle of Docto where he won two bronze stars. And the even though, as I said, the U.S. took Hill 875 and Charles Brown said they were heroes and that we felt like heroes for taking that hill, but it's just unfortunately they couldn't stay on that hill because the it was against Vietnam rules of engagement. The rules of engagement the U.S. military had in Vietnam were what I thought ridiculous, and you couldn't win territory, win hills. As soon as you took a territory, you had to withdraw, and the NVA and the Viet Cong took it. It was kind of silly and kind of ridiculous is what I thought. But the U.S. military has learned their lesson since then. They don't do that anymore, and I'm really glad that they don't. Uh, the, and God bless the peop, God bless the guys in the 173rd Airborne Brigade. They are all volunteers. Many of them did not have to go, and they chose to go, and they chose to undertake a lot of the most dangerous assignments during the war. And after the battle, the soldiers were given and awarded a hard-earned Thanksgiving meal, but some of the soldiers to this day cannot celebrate Thanksgiving because it brings back memories of the Battle of Doc Toe. Or if they do celebrate Thanksgiving, one soldier in this documentary that I watched, he said he would go outside and drink, raise a glass of tequila and drink that glass of tequila to the soldiers who fought in the Battle of Doc Toe, specifically the soldiers who didn't make it back. So, anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.